And now time for the one thing that you can have for breakfast. Coffee. <laughs> oh, thank God that... All right, let's do the filter first. You just fold up the bottom like this. It wasn't until I saw the directions years... <laughs> probably just a couple of months ago. I've always just jammed the filter in, but, and wondered why it never sat well in the, co in the cone filter, uh, pour, or pour over. There we go. Now it's all set, ready to go. Start up our grinding. I have the equivalent of six and a half cups every morning grind because I like my coffee dark all right the grinder has done its job it gets Moved off the stage and coffee filter front and center. Carefully pull this off. This does get all over the place. There's our coffee. Goes back in. What can we do to this coffee? We take a couple of grains of kosher salt, add it to the top. And a little bit of Saigon cinnamon. Add that to the top too. Uh, it's ready to go over the top here with the cup. Now here's one of my secrets to making perfect pour over coffee every time. If you can't put more in your cup, you have an empty pot, you fill the pot with one cup, there's no way that your cup will overflow when we make the coffee. Now we're back at our stove, here's our water on. We have the flame set all the way to high. Time for cooking. Make sure you use the same cup that you measured the water in. I have accidentally put this on top of a smaller cup from time to time. <laughs> and then all of your work of measuring out the perfect amount of water uh, goes all over the counter because <laughs> if you have too much water, it's gonna overflow. All right, so it's gonna go like this. And we're gonna pour on the counter after it's up to temperature. I can't think of anything else exciting about my coffee other than I want it now when you can't have any solids or, um, you know, on a clear liquid diet you get so that there are things that you crave. And I always crave coffee anyways, so. Oh, and also... Uh, I like to keep you entertained. This is how I check the temperature. I use my laser temperature. And I get the temperature of the water. This takes about two minutes for us to get up to temperature. 
You can do this in the microwave too, but uh, I've heard nasty things about microwaving food and everything. So I try to use the microwave less than I used to. I used to use it all the time. It's going to be interesting. Yesterday, I, on the clear liquid diet, I filtered out bouillon. And it was kind of interesting because I never knew bouillon had so much fat in it. At least the bouillon that I used. Other things about coffee, everybody's going to have a different extraction temperature that they like and prefer. Uh, the man who developed the AeroPress, he prefers 185. I myself, seeing as I'm, I'm using a pour over, I like a little bit hotter at 192. However, I'll take it at any temperature above 185. This pot here, I treated myself to recently. It, I think I paid, uh, well, it, it was $165 for this. It's a two quart saucier pot from Heritage Seal made in the United States. And it's uh, titanium steel, supposedly. It's supposed to be tougher than regular steel. So far, it's been doing really well. How are we doing? Well, they say a washed pot never boils. Well, we've been watching this one, haven't we? It's weird with water. I've noticed that sometimes it seems to boil fast and sometimes it seems to boil really slow. I think we're close to temperature right now. See how it, we have bubbles? Then we get the red dot so that it's just like that. Then we release 187. We'll take it. All right. Let's put this away, over to the side, get out our stunt. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll have to turn it off first. <laughs> A little bit of entertainment for you. All right, not very good for my cutting board, but this makes everything go nice and smooth. And are you gonna see me pour? I don't know. Pour in a little bit first, just all the way around. To let the Get chopstick just to stir it up a little bit. Add some more water in there without knocking the whole thing over. We want to get the maximum exposure with coffee grinds to the water. I like my coffee dark. The one thing that I can have on this diet, coffee, jello, no reds though. All right, there's the, 
Now we add all the rest of the water. Another nice thing about this saucier pot is it's really easy to pour. That's my coffee pourer. Now we drip all the way down. Keep stirring. And when it gets close to the bottom, I also cheat a little bit. I'll show you how you do that in just a second. Because if you're a coffee drinker and you haven't had your cup yet, which I have not, and it's almost eight o'clock and I usually have my coffee by seven. It's bad enough that I can't eat my grits today, but all right. Here's my water. Finish that off, get it empty-ish. Then what we do is we lift up, transfer. Perfect. Have black coffee ready. coffee oh just the way I like it now you know how to do one part of the clear liquid diet your coffee <laughs> yummy also this is how I do my coffee every day <laughs> except I don't do it as um, on camera I just slop it all together and have coffee because Coffee should not be, um, I can't think of anything witty. Anyways, that's probably because I haven't eaten. Uh, and I won't be able to eat until tomorrow, much after this time. Love you all. Bye-bye.